I'm really so impassioned to talk about this holiday ditch thing. And I just want, well, you all know, it's like so hard to take two pounds off, but then five pounds goes on just like that. And it's really, really tough during this time of year. There's so many triggers. And I wanted to talk about a whole bunch of different things because I've been getting some great questions and I have them. I'm going to pull them up um, to start off, but you all can write over in the chat too, um, because I know there's there's so many people coming from so many different areas of coming into this animal-based way of eating. And I have some of the questions, um, aside from trying to stay out of this holiday ditch and deal with triggers, is people who are just sort of learning about this way of eating and wondering how is like, what is the best way to start? Um, I know some of you can chime in. I know some of you have been with me for like a year now. Some people are two or three years into this. Oh, hi, Holly. Thanks. Um, so I just want to have you all talk with me about what do you feel are your difficult times with this whole holiday thing? I, I know, especially if you're new to this and just coming on board and let's say you're maybe a month or two in and now of all times, now you have to navigate the holidays and it is so difficult. It's, it's, it's so difficult just navigating kind of coming into this animal based carnivore world in general, and then to really have to um, deal with it in all these social situations. And uh, a lot of people fall in that ditch. It's kind of like what I call that proverbial ditch. It's so, so difficult to stay on course and stay on track, unless you've been at it long enough, where you've gotten so many positive benefits that you're like, all right, I'm not going to let it derail me. It's derailed me year after year and I'm staying the course because I'm feeling so many benefits and so positive from it. So that's really the best, that's the, the best way to stay on course, but there's all sorts of other tips and tricks. And, you know, we all have to kind of figure it out for ourselves as far as what works best. But I can say for sure heading into a situation, it's really important that you have a plan and that you try to really think ahead. And whether that be eating ahead, bringing food that you can easily snack on and eat and contribute to the, let's say, food event, because let's face it, food is everything in the holidays. It's it's what we center all the celebrations around. And it's, it's so set in tradition too, which makes that even more difficult. So um, I'm going to uh, answer a couple of questions because over on Instagram, I posted a question box and I had some uh, great <laughs> followers chime in and type what they'd like discussed or questions they had. I also really want to, I'm going to actually come right in here and look at the chat first. Um, and yeah, Gina says, some people are relentless in trying to get you to take just one bite. That is so common. And it's like, I don't want to say misery loves company, but everybody wants you to partake in what they're partaking in. And if it's some decadent, gloppy, sugary pecan pie or whatever it is. It's like people want you to um, join them. Uh, similar to drinking alcohol, people don't want to sit with somebody drinking water necessarily when they're in the mood to have a drink with somebody. And it's kind of similar with food in a very strange way. I don't know if you all have felt that kind of um, 
really that feeling that you get from others like, oh, come on. And it's it's really, it's it's one of those things in a bizarre way, especially if like me, if you're been addicted to this stuff and you feel like you're sober from it. And I know these terms seem really weird to so many of you who might just be at that point where you just think, well, I want to eat healthier and I'm trying to get over some of my aches and pains or get off some of my meds. And then you don't really realize it until you really try to get off of a lot of this food. I put it in quotes because this stuff that's in our society, I say, if it comes in a box, a bag, a bottle, or a jar, we really, really do not want to put it in our bodies. It's, you know, and it's very difficult to really rein your whole perspective on food, rein it in to the point where you can grasp the thought of eating this proper human diet, uh, this optimal ancestral diet. It's so difficult. And I remember back when I started, it was so bizarre to me to think that I wasn't going to eat bread or pasta or rice or crackers or pretzels or any of that again. And all of the desserts and the sugar, which so addicted to, I, I lived a, a 30 year hell of, um, really, uh, binge eating disorder, sugar addiction, processed food addiction. And it's no joke. It really isn't. And that's why I, oh, thanks for the birthday wishes guys. I, um, <laughs> the past two years, I actually did this on my birthday. Um, yeah, it's tomorrow, December 1st. I, because you all have become my family. Um, I don't have a big extended family at all. My family is like down to pretty much nothing. And this is so great for me to share my birthday with my friends because so many of you have actually become personal friends of mine and you know who you are <laughs> over there. And um, I'm just so, I, I feel blessed to really have um, this other family and I really want to just try to help as many as I can. And I want to hear about your struggles and I want to hear where you're at in this stage of coming out of the sad standard atrocious diet. I like that instead of the standard American diet. I just love the standard atrocious diet because we feel so alone in this when you come over to this side and you realize the truth of, or actually the lies of what we've been told. And now you are in the truth of your own reality of feeling great eating this way. But it's so difficult because we're made to feel as if we're the freaks. I mean, it's even bizarre that the vegans, vegetarians, they get a hall pass because, hey, they're healthy. That restrictive way that they're eating is kind of applauded, right? And people will bend over backward. Like nobody's like shoving a ribeye in their face saying, oh, come on, just one bite. Like that doesn't happen. But when it comes down to all the other foods that we're eliminating because we want to be healthy and we want to eat really what our human bodies as animals, what we are intended to eat. And we are put in a position of what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Come on. You really going to do that the rest of your life? Like all of, what do you mean you don't eat vegetables? What about your triglycerides? What about there's, it just goes on and on and on. And for those of you who have been in this, like I have, you know what I'm talking about because you've heard all the naysayers and you've battled against it. And sometimes lost in that battle being that, you're in a, in a spot and you don't want to hurt your host's feelings or you feel, well, awkward and you don't want to make anybody else feel uncomfortable. And all of those kind of things can come into play when you're not strong enough in your conviction to say, you know what, I'm doing what's healthy and what's right for me. And I don't give a crap about what anybody else thinks or says. And you have to really do it long enough 
so that you have that um, strength of, you know, uh, being able to tell people off or politely, or just say, you know what, I feel great. Thanks for your concern, but I feel great. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that great? Isn't that strange or whatever? You can agree with them that what you're doing is strange and different because honestly it is in, in our, it, it appears to be, but when you kind of pull back and say, you know what, this isn't strange compared to what was on earth for millions of years for us as humans to be able to hunt and eat. So, all right. I want to, um, go over and read some in the chat. Um, uh, I'm just, I'm just jumping right in where I'm seeing it here as it feeds up. I'm the same as you. Any sweet taste takes me down the road to additional health, dairy, nuts, seeds, veggies, lee. Yeah. So yeah, it, you know, people say, well, you're not, it's not like you're having a cookie and ice cream, but once I, this is for me and my personal experience. Once I started in on something that I thought, all right, just like, I guess, is Kim chiming in there again, or you're saying about the nuts. Oh, keto Pilates chick says, uh, gain two pounds from the nuts. Yeah. And like, you know, a bowl of nuts. Okay. Nuts are keto. Nuts are quote unquote from earth and natural. It's not like we're eating peanut brittle or, you know, something where you could say, well, that's a definite no, but if I give myself permission at a bowl of mixed nuts, there's no such thing as eating four or five nuts or one handful of nuts. There is not the capability for me. And, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, aside from being a sugar and let's say, I don't know, whatever carb processed food addict, um, nuts, are in that category, I could binge, I could really, I could, I could end up binging on a simple bowl of nuts. So, and then that leads to something else. Cause it's like, well, I had the nuts and okay, we're just going to have a cheat day. And then the cheat day typically evolves into the cheat weekend evolves into, oh, I'm having a tough time getting out. Well, it's this holiday party next week and let's just get back on track January 1st. So that's, that's a plan if that's your plan, but that is typically five, eight pounds more <laughs> at that point after you've spent what period of time trying to figure out exactly what we should eat to allow our bodies to be healthy as far as insulin resistance and glucose and ketones and get our blood and our hormones, most importantly, hormones healed and regulated and our microbiome. You know, now that I'm saying all this, it's all intertwined and it's not easy. This is takes time because we have trashed our bodies for decades. I'm nobody, I don't think anybody in here is 20 years old. <laughs> um, it, Normally, you know, it's in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, all depends on how long it took your body to break down from having the onslaught of unnatural um, food source. So uh, yeah, somebody's, so it's funny. I mean, I just dart over into the chat now and the first thing I pick up is, yeah, I don't buy peanut butter anymore either. Oh, no, no, no. Especially the extra chunky peanut butter. That's what I went for, of course. Um, yeah, couldn't couldn't have it. Couldn't have it in the house. It's so let me get into um, I, I had some people uh, in the Instagram question box, right? Starting seems to be so hard. How does someone just start? Ah, yeah jump on in, the water's fine. <laughs> um, it comes with really going down the rabbit hole of watching videos like mine and Dr. Berry's and Dr. Chafee's and Dr. Kilts. And, you know, I, and I name these people and Kelly Hogan and Laura Spath and Judy Cho, like there's so many who are 
out here trying to put out the information about why you want to do this and how healthy it is to do this and how extremely detrimental to your health long term. I mean, the, the hard thing is, is we don't realize we're committing slow suicide when we just keep putting these foods in our bodies that are not basically meat, seafood, eggs, uh, and that it's really important to get that mindset where it's not that I can't eat these other things. It's that I'm choosing, I'm really choosing not to eat them. And I then get to that mindset of, I don't want to eat them. So if there's fresh baked Toll House chocolate chip cookies there, you know, you could, the smell, the memory, there's all that there, but it's like, no, you know what? I listened to that Lustig presentation on how toxic sugar is. I've watched so many um, presentations on the mental aspect of it, depression, anxiety, bipolar. There's so many issues with being inflammatory to our neurons our, and our, our brains that we have to really remember that this is like an onslaught of these kinds of foods that we put in our bodies and that that's why we're choosing not to eat them anymore because we want to feel good. We want to live healthy, productive lives for as long as we can. And by keeping in the, let's just call it the mainstream media message of lots of whole grains, lots of plants, veggies, fruits, nuts, seeds. You keep in that dialogue and uh, in my opinion and opinion of many medical professionals, including cardiologists at this point, is that it is really not going to end well. Whether, I mean, you got to remember dementia, Alzheimer's, there's so much that we are cancer, the big C word, right? Stroke, heart attack, all of that. I am so convinced that by eliminating, and so <laughs> I went way off on a tangent from that original question that I read, which says, starting seems to be so hard. How does someone just start? So yeah, you start by flooding your brain with the information and understanding the reason why, you know, this type of, which is called a diet, I hate to use the term diet, way of eating, this way of eating is used in Hungary for that PKD. Sophia Clemens um, does some great presentations on YouTube and, you know, go check that out about how they're trying to heal like stage four cancers and epilepsy and some severe, severe um, medical diagnosis with this way of eating, which is moderate protein, high fat, all animal foods and healing over time, healing. Notice I didn't say fasting. I'm not a big fan of fasting and I feel, and she's also not, because eating this way, if you eat a higher percentage of fat to protein is a fasting mimicking way of eating, very healing for our bodies. So um, no, the meat does not have to be grass fed and um, eat what you can afford. Yeah. Eat what you like and what you can afford. And I say, here I am, March will be 14 years for me. I, up to this point, have not ever um, worried myself about grass-fed, organic, none of that. You know why? Here's, here's the real reason why. It was a, It's important enough that I'm not eating donuts and ice cream and cookies. I'm not, I, I, I had bigger fish to fry in that whole little scenario here of just getting meat-based and eating meat and only meat. And um, I decided that I had, a, a, 
You know, the rules are really simple. Execution's not easy. So I was making it as easy as possible. I go to Costco. I shop sales at the local grocery store. The meat's delicious. And I'm getting into it. And I'm not breaking the bank. And I'm not having to, you know, jump through hoops trying to figure out where my source is. But that's my first recommendation as far as don't, you know, some people say, well, all I'm eating is meat. It's got to be, you know, a certain type of meat, I'm sure. Right. And I'm like, no, just, just eat the meat. Just, just get your favorite fatty meat, um, eat the fat trimmings and, um, and then, and then just go with it just, and it'll evolve. And for me, it's going to evolve. I'm going to hook in with some like really great regenerative, um, local cutting out the big, you know, conglomerate meat packer, uh, you know, I'm, I'm heading down that path, but that's, this is way down the road for me that I'm starting to say, okay, now let's maybe pay more attention to, um, exactly the source, but no, don't worry, please do not worry about when I say the quality of your meat, the meat everywhere that I go to purchase meat, whether it's Aldi's or Walmart or my local grocery store or Whole Foods, or my, my latest favorite is that a store called Wild Fork. It's they're based in Florida and there's a lot of locations. I think I actually started looking into it. They're down in Miami and there's lots of locations down there, but they're now starting to um, open other locations and pff, talk about a carnivore's dream. You walk in there, it's just all freezer um, aisles of freezers, but really high quality meat, um, vacuum sealed frozen. And oh, so far what I've bought there is amazing. So, but again, this is just as like a, a kid in the candy store getting excited about a new like grocery store that's mainly centered on meat, meat and seafood. So, but yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about the, the, the meat at this point. Um, uh, thanks for asking. They're asking, how is my mom doing since my dad's passing really, really well? Um, um, remarkably well. And I've been um, busy taking her to some appointments. She's up in the Poconos in Pennsylvania and I brought her down here and then I taking her, she's needed knee replacement surgery on her second knee now for quite a while and put it off because of my dad. So she'll be here with me for a couple of weeks. Um, next week she's coming down and I'm going to go through the whole um, knee surgery and rehab with her for a couple of weeks and then I'll get her back home. But thanks for asking. She's doing great. Um, <laughs> here's the question. <laughs> Do I, my mom of course knows all about my carnivore thing and um, I'll be cooking for her. She'll be over on the couch with her leg up. <laughs> Does mom go full on full bore carnivore or what am I buying for mom? So these are interesting questions that I'm encountering now because um, of the situation. I've always said, I don't want to force my thoughts and knowledge and way of eating on somebody else. But deep down, it's so hard because especially those of you, I know I see a lot of you from my groups on here and I know your stories and I know the situation with the ones with the spouse who came on board after during uh, the quarantine lockdown, they they blasted uh, daily um, YouTube videos of Dr. Barry and myself and others in front of their spouse to um, get them to go, huh, that's interesting. Um, all the way to others who uh, their spouse is quote unquote normal weight and wants nothing to do with this crazy meat thing that their spouse is doing. And, but meanwhile, mm, not ideal health. Weight is not always the indicator of health or illness. I mean, a lot of people who are normal weight who get diabetes, a lot who also get cancer and a lot who get arthritis and dementia and Alzheimer's and stroke and heart disease, blah, blah, blah. I could keep going on and on, right? But again, one of my sayings, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him carnivore. And this is just so, um, let's say, far out there in thought for most people that they have such a difficult time comprehending doing it. And, you know, the, the, the best that 
I can say, and others have chimed in in the um, chat is, you know what, you just have to do what's best for yourself and try to have hope and faith that you will lead by example. And I have had one who said their spouse said, wow, this thing is really working so well for you. Um, and, you know, gave it a 30 day try and then didn't look back. So that is such a difficult topic with uh, family members. And I'm not just saying just a spouse or a partner, but also kids or grown kids that are in the house or children. I mean, it's, it's something that I always bring up when I do my coaching because it can really sabotage your own efforts. It is so hard having your drug of choice right there. And, you know, I said one of the best ways to do this, and I'm going to talk to this Instagram person again who wrote this question, how does someone just start? Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to say, clean out your cupboards, clean out your freezer and your refrigerator and pantry of pretty much anything that comes in a box, a bag, a bottle or a jar. If it's not meat, seafood or eggs, out it goes. Try that one on. <laughs> out goes all the peanut butter. And literally, the only thing I could say that comes in a bag that's okay is pork rinds. They come in a bag. <laughs> um, let's see, a jar. You can get uh, some clotted cream or double cream in a jar at the kind of in the fancy cheese section of a lot of stores. So, um, so I know what I'm saying. Somebody could say, well, that comes in a jar that comes in a bag. Yeah. Okay. I get it. But in general, you know what I mean? Um, it, it really is a pretty good way of, um, determining whether it's okay or not to eat, but basically it's meat, little bits of seafood. I don't go out of my way really to buy it. I know there's a big benefit to oysters and cod liver and um, certain things. I love when I go out to order, I'll get um, salmon sashimi or tuna sashimi. Uh, I love escargot, sitting in butter. Um, so all those kind of things I really enjoy um, having on occasion too, but it's basically um, beef and lamb, like ruminant meat, uh, seafood, eggs. I am really, and okay, let me throw this out here to you all who, um, let me, um, let me pull up. Um, okay. So this is what I was going to throw out to, to you is, Tomorrow's December 1st, and I typically like to have the first of a month, and of course, we've got January 1st coming up, which is, January is World Carnivore Month, so I would love for anybody who is still on the edge of whatever it happens to be, keto, keto with massive cheats, keto with all the keto, what I call keto garbage, keto Franken food, um, because I know it's so easy to grasp onto those things that we're trying to mimic and hold on to. And I, honestly, I feel like it's, it's so important just to get out of your head that you need to eat a sandwich or a burger has to be on a bun or that, um, you know, uh, you have to have a dessert uh, because that's kind of that has to be one of those things that changes in your mindset. Get yourself good and satiatedly full on fatty meat. Use extra fat trimmings and butter, or just go initially for like as fatty of ground beef as you can. If you can get 75 25, that's a great ratio. But again, it's just really. Um, difficult to wrap our brains around this. And maybe you want to start the 1st of December tomorrow <laughs> as, um, all right, I'm giving up artificial sweeteners for the month. Give yourself a 30 day challenge. I like those kind of things because I think it really puts you in the mindset of like, all right, I can do anything for 30 days. When I talk about people trying carnivore, I'm really careful to say, 
that you really have to do 90 days because the first 30 days for somebody who's coming really off of, um, let's say the standard atrocious diet, or even if they kind of dabbled in Atkins and keto in the past, but they're going for the carnivore, it can take four to six weeks. And I mean, truly four to six weeks to adapt, fat adapt, get your digestion changed because heck, it's had an onslaught of undigestible fiber and cellulose through fruits and vegetables and grains and even nuts. Um, so I like to say the 90 day, but what I'm talking about with the first of a month is maybe, <laughs> hi, Tim, <laughs> uh, maybe um, you can just say, all right, I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to give up chewing gum or all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to white knuckle it. I can do this. I'm going to give up whatever it is. And for somebody brand new to this, maybe you want to step into it. So when this person says, how does someone just start? You could try to figure out, are you the rip the bandaid off kind of person? Or do you think that you could handle it better where you say week one, bread goes week two, pasta and rice and potatoes go like whatever you want to make as your plan and ease into it that way. And ultimately knowing your goal is meat, seafood, eggs. At the beginning, I highly recommend if you are tolerant of it, that you keep dairy in meaning, and when I'm talking about dairy, I'm talking about cheese. Cause I don't know, butter, I've, I've not ever totally eliminated butter, but I am going to tell you, and boy, if I'm not <laughs> publicly announcing this or what, but I'm going to do, um, uh, a 30 days starting tomorrow, December 1st, I'm going no dairy except for butter. So I'm just talking about no cheese, no sour cream, no heavy cream. It's not easy when you have developed a habit or a pattern of relying on certain things as a bridge or a crutch or a treat. Um, and then we could go all into the whole coffee and caffeine thing and the decaf and what are we doing here with all this? And I just decided that, and you know, for those of you who know me, I gave up caffeine 10 years ago. So caffeine is not my issue. I have a decaf only every so often because I'm not addicted to that. But dang, I do like it sometimes. And sometimes I use it as a crutch. If I'm sitting here doing work, I will whip up uh, just a, a, a little ounce of heavy cream and uh, and do some decaf coffee. And it's, it's kind of like a treat. It's a bridge. It's a, so now the thought is, is this an emotional vent? Am I, am I having this? Cause I'm hungry. You know, there's all sorts of things. And, you know, listen to me, there's, I'm almost 14 years in with this and I'm still putzing around with this stuff. And I know for sure for me that cheese can be problematic and I don't keep, I can't have a ball of fresh mozzarella in my fridge because once I open that package and I start cutting in it, mm, it's pretty much a done deal. There's not anything going back in the fridge. So that's not a sober behavior. And um, I have a very good friend um, who I met way back uh, when I first came into the Zeroing In on Health Charles Washington group who has recovered from many things, including alcohol, drugs, cigarettes and bulimia, binge eating disorder. And she said, by far, the food was extremely exponentially more difficult than any of the other three. So just think about how powerful that statement is. And um, I'm trying to think, I lost my train of thought of what I was saying with, oh, so she um, is still active in AA and talks about, and I had her come on sort of like as a 
guest speaker, I, you know, banter with me in my group meetings and bring her knowledge and experience to it was awesome. And uh, so we talked about, she said, you know, with certain things in your life, if you feel like you're drawn to them and you keep doing them, that's not a sober behavior, whether it's Diet Coke, think about it. You'd say, all right, I'm going to drink less of it. And thinking about how potentially extremely hard it is for you to stop either chewing gum or Diet Coke or um, even the stevia and the coffee, all that stuff. It's not a sober behavior when you're drawn to it. And it's not a health thing. It's not healthy. Chewing gum is not healthy. Okay. Stevia, not a health food. So all of these things, when you think about them, and for me, even though cheese is carnivore, I'm at another level now where I don't exhibit sober behavior around having a, a brick of cheese or a ball of that fresh mozzarella. And I just love that term sober behavior because I'm realizing, yeah, that's not, that's, that's really when, when I start thinking about how I am around certain things, um, I, I, I start thinking, you know what, it's time to at least do a trial period to eliminate it. And um, oh, so Pam says her weakness is cheese also. Ugh, haven't bought it in months. Oh, wow. So good for you, Pam. You've been off of the cheese for months. Um, yeah, so Alex says went to an AA meeting and they were all eating sugar and smoking. Yeah, welcome to the world of cross addiction. And therein lies my other topic I typically really get into, which is, and, and I spoke with um, my friend Suzanne about this too, is that why are we doing what we're doing as far as whether it's consoling ourselves with food, um, whether it's for anger or stress or depression or loneliness or, you know, whatever the emotion is that we as food sugar addicts use that for, and, and then likewise, somebody using cigarettes to calm themselves down or alcohol. And they're all so closely interrelated. And ultimately, is what, why? We are seeking to fill a void. There is some sort of, and I'm just going to use it, the term emotional void that's there that we're driven to console ourselves. And we've learned over the years what tool addiction we use for that. So it's really important to try to have substitute, um, I don't want to say addiction, substitute activities, whether it's you know, something as simple as crocheting or having a puzzle out on your table or making it a point because you really want to get uh, healthier and we're going to walk more and say, you know what, every single day, absolutely, you know, I'm going to get in so many steps. Or when I'm in that heat of the moment and I'm white knuckling it and the rest of my family is having popcorn in front of the TV. Yeah, there's other ways around it. You can throw here again. I'm using the crutch of some grated cheese onto pork rinds, warm it up and sit and have that when your family's having the popcorn. Use these kind of tools um, or say, you know what, I'm going to put a podcast in about food addiction, sugar addiction, or just some motivational um, kind of thing. And I'm going to go for a 15 minute walk. Um whatever it is to try to really get your relationship with food changed where we're not turning to it. And it's, it's not, it's not easy. It really isn't. And I, that's why I'm so, um, I, I, I so encourage any of you who are struggling, who are maybe in a home situation where they don't have the support of the spouse or the, your whole family. I have people in, my groups where we've become their normalcy as far as this whole world of how we deal with food and nourishing ourselves and what we're choosing to eat and how we're dealing with how others are choosing to eat, even though in the worst way, 
seeing somebody who you love suffer from certain illnesses and not want to be open to what you're saying as far as healing themselves. And that's, that's all really, really frustrating too. And um, that there's, there's a lot of things that you have to just deal with and learn about yourself and others on this journey. I mean, this, that's why I really love calling it your, your journey to optimal health. It's your journey and you are responsible and only you of what passes through your lips. Now that's not to mean, that's not to uh, say that, you know, it, it's easy or that you are just free and clear once you decide that, well, I'm in control. It's hard when you have all that around you and on top of that, have people encouraging you to eat a certain way or actually um, picking at you in a negative way about not eating vegetables or, or whatever it is. So, um, oh, hi, Kathleen. Uh, so I, I'm so, oh, gosh, I, I wish... I mean, I'm, I'm actually, I, I really would like to do these. I, I don't know, maybe if I could figure out a good day and time and do these every week and have um, the interaction of people as they are in different stages of attempting carnivore and what they're struggling with. And um, okay, Jennifer says, thank you for the live chat carnivore for a few months. I was starting to get macular degeneration, but looks like it is reversing. I can tell already. Wow. That's phenomenal. That's something so near and dear to my heart, Jennifer, because you know, I've been an eye doctor for, oh my God, I hate over 30 years. So yeah, I'll be 58 tomorrow. Woohoo! <laughs> and I, I, I guess I'm in maybe in the minority of women who I don't mind saying my age, maybe, maybe because I feel sort of like on top of the world as far as that goes. Yes, I get it. I'm, I've got more wrinkles now than I did. I am probably slowing down just a touch, but I don't think I am really. I mean, I, I'm still flipping cartwheels at the gym every time I go, flipping cartwheels on the beach. I'm going to hike a mountain next summer, I hope. Um, and, you know, I, I so I don't, I, I actually, for, for part of the reason why um, with the age thing, I want people to know that I've been doing this a long time and I haven't tanked my hormones. I haven't tanked my thyroid. I haven't screwed up my electrolytes. And I mean, cause, and I get it. You guys all get so much, um, noise, you know, and so do I, I mean, it's so funny because, Oh gosh. Um, so I listened to Sophia Clemens talk on YouTube with, uh, Dr. Kiltz and it was really interesting. And I, I love just keep, I love to really hear what people in this, this kind of circle of, um, animal based carnivore to hear their opinions from their experience with dealing with their patients that they're trying to heal. And, oh, she did say something that really hit home with me as far as she, she's like, yeah, with her patients. Now, granted, these are people who have significant illnesses and cancers and diabetes and um, serious problems that to heal them, they, they do this high fat, moderate protein, no dairy and no butter. And of course, no alcohol, no coffee and no tea. Okay. Hmm. All right. Now we're down to meat and water and eggs and maybe a little bit of seafood. So I, um, I look at that where, and, and, and <laughs> so, yeah, it's really, it's, I mean, talk about, it's hard enough wrapping our brains around this carnivore way of life. Um, and then to whittle it down even further 
um, to let's just say for most of us like beef and lamb, bone marrow and liver. So she says bone marrow, liver and brain have just have one of the three of those on occasion. That's ideal, but she's not proposing that you have to. And, you know, I'm always quick to say I did not eat bone marrow, brain or liver through most all of this. I just have a little bit of that pluck seasoning now that I tell you guys about that I really like. It's desiccated um, organic thymus, heart, kidney, spleen, and liver, and in a delicious spice blend. And so, yeah, I sprinkle it on my food because do I think there's beneficial nutrition in liver? Absolutely. I'm not buying supplements. I never have bought a liver supplement, organ supplement, testicle, brain supplement ever. Um, if it came down to that before I would ever do that, I would um, buy liver and I would probably partially freeze it and pull it out and then cube it in little cubes and then throw it back in and freeze and maybe pop one here or there. You know, I guess if you make them small enough and you, um, that that would be my thing that I would consider doing, but I haven't even gone there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Um, I'm not looking to purchase brain. I've heard it's rather tasty, but um, I just can't bring myself to do that at this point. Uh, and I get people who write to me. You could imagine all the sorts of different DMs I get over on Instagram and that how could you think you're healthy if you're not eating organs? I say, well, actually, I'm not eating uh, Twinkies and Pop-Tarts and donuts anymore. So I'm way ahead of the game, buddy. <laughs> that's that's kind of my response most of the time. You know what? We, you know, we we all do our own research and information and our own N equals one experiment. And my N equals one experiment shows this. I haven't eaten bone marrow, brain, and liver through all of this. I do like liverwurst. I eat that once in a while. And I am going to um, attempt to do another recipe because if you know me, I like to kind of come up with simple, easy, and what I consider good ideas for this. And there's a, um, a recipe that I'm going to make that's kind of like, uh, it's, it's basically a liver um, a liver pate. And I, I don't know, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. And you know, you'll get my honest, total honest opinion. And, uh, I'll, I'll probably post a video maybe later, but for now, butter and coffee keep you sane. Yeah. Jackie Jones. Yeah, I get it. And I have been, um, so what I decided to do for my, I, I like to do it a challenge of the month. Um, so what I decided was that I was going to keep in butter. I'm going to do meat, seafood for what minimal amount I eat of it, but basically we'll lump that in with meat, eggs, and butter. And I'm going to see how I do. And I'm going to try really hard to stay consistent with my ratios. Um, for some people who have asked questions about uh, ratios and how to get started and all that. It, it's so awesome to come into the group and I'm not here to be a salesperson. I, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not, I don't do this for the money. This is not my career. Um, I could, um, sail off into the sunset right now and be perfectly okay and happy. I'm, I do this because I really see how helpful it is for people for staying on track, for being able to ask questions, to be in just in a group where you can talk and um, bounce things or share. We share, you know, different videos and recipes. And I don't know, it becomes a very solid community to be able to help adapt to this way of life. So that's, that's all I'm going to point out about that. Um, so Debbie asks, Dr. Lisa, did you start carnivore 14 years ago to lose weight? Oh, Debbie, that's such a loaded question because I've been trying to lose weight my entire life. Um, I was um, a 
chubby kid. Yeah, I wore the in the Sears Husky. I think they called it Husky. Um, and I, by the time I think I was like in fifth or sixth grade, I realized I was chubbier than my classmates. Um, I realized when my mom made my favorite macaroni and cheese or lasagna that I didn't just eat one, you know, dinner at, you know, one serving, I was, you know, out always for the second helping. And my parents are obese and diabetic. My dad has since passed a couple months ago. My brother's obese and diabetic, although he's type one diabetic. But the reality for me is, dang, looking back at it now, I was, I was born into an environment of, um, carbon sugar addiction. And I, it just took off with me. Like, you know, as with friends, we jump on our bikes and drive to the lo local five and 10. I get the pixie sticks and the wax lips and the gobstoppers, everlasting gobstoppers. And I, therein lies, I think the start of this whole friggin' mess. And, um, I, I just couldn't, um, I couldn't stop. And so I just kept bouncing around from one diet to another you know, even as, as a, as a kid trying to figure out and, um, you know, go low fat, go cabbage soup diet. This was like in high school. And then I got into gymnastics and eating disorders, because guess what? You can really start controlling your weight with eating disorders as horrible as they are. And as extremely detrimental to your health. I literally cannot believe, you know, I suffered 30 years then after that not getting obese because of the eating disorder, but had a severe, severe binge eating disorder. And yeah, looking back now, it's me now saying, holy smokes, that poor, that poor you was totally in the black hole of sugar processed food addiction and couldn't get out from under myself because the, the pull was so strong. I would start eating salads with you know, the boneless, skinless chicken breast on it. And, you know, going like trying to go super low fat, because back in that day, that's what we're told, you got to, you know, go low fat. And that's where it's at for losing weight, that didn't work, I'd be face down in a, you know, the next binge. And so, gosh, I'm trying to think of what your original question was, was, oh, did I originally do this to lose weight? Yeah, no. So yeah, in a roundabout way, absolutely. It was for, um, getting, um, my, uh, eating disorder under control, getting rid of it, getting sober from it. And it wasn't until I fortunately found that group that zeroing in on health. And I started reading and we had these journals in there. It was a website and, I read these, there was a couple women in there for that very reason that they resolved themselves of it with this. And I was like, wow, but is it healthy? I don't know, but sure as heck I'm jumping in, <laughs> started it, kept researching it, stayed with the group. And we started re watching, reading, listening to all sorts of research by um, Wilhelmsen Stephenson, um, the Arctic explorer who, you know, talks about this whole um, carnivore way of eating and, you know, not by bread alone and fat of the land and all these, we just kind of just dove into it to try to figure out like, yeah, wow, this actually is really healthy and let's keep doing it because we feel great. So yeah, three food groups, Alex, Twinkies, Pop-Tarts and Donuts. It's kind of crazy. Uh, how does butter mix with coffee? Seems weird. So yeah, so there is uh, a, a great, if, and I, there's a couple ways to try to deal with the whole coffee thing. Um, some people who get off of heavy cream will whisk uh, one or two egg yolks, raw egg yolks in the bottom of the mug, and then um, whisk in a couple tablespoons of melted butter and whisk those together really well. It'll start to get foamy and then add in the coffee. Keep whisking. It will not cook the eggs. Keep whisking and you'll have this kind of delicious frothy um, coffee drink. And so to that also, I'll add... Um, I don't know. I'm like thinking, am I going to totally give up my occasional decaf and go to what's another really great 
crutch to use coming off of coffee is that kind of that very same um, mixture I'm talking about. Take a mug, couple of raw egg yolks, couple tablespoons of butter, whisk it, and now just pour in hot, very hot water. And I'm going to also add a touch of cinnamon and a touch of just um, vanilla extract. And it's going to maybe be a drink that I might use as a crutch getting me off of any heavy cream. And like I said, not that I use that a lot. It's only maybe maybe three or four times a week, but still it's enough that I'm feeling it's not a sober behavior. And uh, But this egg yolk and butter nog or drink, whatever you want to call it, totally acceptable as far as my current plan and rules for um, the meat, eggs, and butter uh, challenge I'm giving myself for the month of December. Um, oh, thanks, Pam. Um, let's see. Kiwi Kim says, I'm 67 and this works well for me. I fall off the wagon a lot, though, so I'm gonna, going to have to be strict and resist hubby's snacks. His weight is perfect on moderate carbs. Yeah. Well, but so that therein lies the issue. So his weight is perfect on moderate carbs. So first of all, you have somebody who evidently can moderate because they haven't overeaten to the point of obesity, but doesn't mean that those carbs are not internally doing damage, leaky gut, separating the um, cellular membrane and having these plant, carb, grain, fruit, nut, vegetation, toxins getting through and what? Who knows? Like I said, there's a lot of normal weight people, heart disease, cancer, stroke, skin issues, anxiety, depression issues. I mean, it doesn't mean that we are immune to issues. It's just that that person isn't lucky enough to have something that is their why that makes them cry to try to find what they need to do differently. Because as far as they're concerned right now, all is well. So that is where I love when um, Dr. Uh, Charles Washington often had said, the lucky ones get fat. And then the lucky ones get fat. And that saying is because that's what will then end up typically bringing them to finding this. So if you're lucky enough to have that problem and here you are getting um, healthy and hopefully to our proper lean body weight over time. And remember, this is not a quick fix weight loss. This is something that really you have to understand. You have to embrace this, that this is going to take time where you've got this freighter that was going along for decades. Come on, let's be honest, guys. A lot of you are in your 50s too. I can still say that. I don't, 60 might bother me a little, but I'm, I don't know. I'm still good with 58. Um, maybe, maybe if, well, no, I, it'll still be good as long as I can still feel like I'm trying to hopefully still look 40. I don't know. I'm probably not getting away with it anymore. But um, uh, Todd says you're super helpful, Doc, and the group's community you're crafting are great and getting better all the time. Anyone listening, get off your donkey and get some coaching with Dr. Lisa. Todd, you're awesome. He, I have been recently um, coaching and I... I just, I love interacting into each of your lives to get you to the point of figuring out what tweaks we're going to change, what things you have to do and where you're at in your journey. If like somebody comes at me with, oh, I've been doing this for six months, but I keep falling in the ditch. And then we're going to get to the bottom of that. And then we're also going to get you to maybe test your glucose and ketones every morning for a little while to say, you know what, sometimes that helps keep you out of the ditch. Cause when you're about ready to put something in your mouth, you're like, no, my glucose has been good. I don't want it. You know, and then you can see what it does to your glucose the next day. It's like all these little things that can be helpful. Um, that I think is really important to consider even when they're things that maybe you're not initially comfortable doing, but having somebody there to say, you know what, I know this works for a lot of people and we're going to 
just kind of get you on the right track and let's see where we go. So, uh, let's see. Kiwi Kim says, I get that carnivore four years, but I fall off the wagon at holidays and that leads to a couple months of carb addiction. Yeah, that therein lies my whole, I know I'm already probably an hour in here. It's time to go, but, um, I could keep going. <laughs> um, here, this is it. This is, this is really where it's at. That's why I find that I really ever, and I, every year when this trifecta comes around this Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, cause then, you know, it rolls into new years where everybody's like, ah, I put on eight pounds. Ah, I'm up 11 pounds. And like, what the heck happened? And it's hard to climb out of that. Next thing you know, it's so uh, it's chocolate for Valentine's is all in your face and in the stores. Right. And it just keeps going. And then I have people say that, you know, they, they, they're, they wallow in the ditch for quite a while. You know why their little ditch demon in there is loving it. It's like, yeah, we're still having bagels tomorrow. Let's get on it. Um, and, and what, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. It's a psychological thing of, um, it's so addictive and our addictive brain, those dopamine hits really, uh, they work a number on you to keep you at it. And so it's, it's really, that's why I kind of feel like so much emphasis really should be on saying, okay, it's December 1st tomorrow, guys, let's you know, let's, Hey, I'm going to do something different this year. I'm going to make it through the holidays without eating Christmas butter cookies. Wow. Well, that's novel. i have never happened before, but you know what? I got to do it and, and I can do it and I want to do it. That's it again. Remember, it's not that I can't have them. You can have them like you've had them every other year and you can go in the ditch like you have every other year. Right? So we have to make a change to make a change and unless you really make that commitment and decide that you're going to draw the line in the sand and you're going to abstain because let's face it. If you know <laughs> me and my talks, it's about abstinence. I have always said I cannot moderate a cupcake. I'm not eating half of a cupcake. I'm really not ever. I can't moderate just two bites of a slice of cheesecake. It doesn't happen. So I, uh, and, and then also it really then will totally sink you into potentially having to climb your way out of the ditch. And for some people, it can be a year in the ditch, you know, forget about, and I know there's some people out here that say, all right, just go ahead and have your pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving and get right back on it the next day. It's okay. And then make it through December, but at Christmas time, go ahead and have your Christmas cookies and get right back on it. That does not happen for me. And I think a lot of people understand what I'm saying who can relate to it. So, um, hi, Dr. Lisa I have borderline high pressure in my eyes. I take liquid cod liver oil. Any suggestions what I need to do? Yeah, you just need to be carnivore and stay carnivore because I'm telling you, I have people who have reported to me their um, intraocular pressure, their IOP has been reducing and they've been getting off meds or if they were just a glaucoma suspect and their doctor was monitoring them every three months or six months said, wow, we're, uh, we're, we're out of the woods here on this. And so I just feel so strongly. I don't care what any of you write in there about, I have this, will carnivore help that? I have this, will carnivore, will, will, will. Yes, yes, yes. I believe our bodies are driven through evolution to be in a healthy state and keep driving itself toward health and repair of any toxins. There's some toxins we can't help. You know, there's chemtrails and pesticides and EMF. And I've got this blue light in my eyes. I don't have my blue blockers on. And, you know, there's all of these kind of things that we have difficulty controlling everything, but what we can control is not putting sugars, grains, processed foods, seed oils into our mouth. And that is the main thing and the key thing 
um, to, to really get you on the path to health. So, all right. I know I really wish I could sit here and just read through all of these questions in the chat and, um, and, and keep going and listening to, um, the, uh, well, reading the different replies that you all have in here, but I am going to, uh, cataracts on a scale of two. Is that just starting or is it advanced? Yeah. So that's, um, that's just mild. Um, you know, we kind of grade them one through four, three and four is where you're really in the need for surgery if it's reducing your vision. And so, um, I think that again, people say, well, what about carnivore for cataracts? Yes, yes, yes. There's my, my, my same answer is that sugar, um, in particular is very detrimental to a lot of different structures. And I, I just feel that we were not intended to go blind and not be able to fend for ourselves and hunt if we're blind from cataracts. So, um, yeah, it, that's, I think it, you can at least halt the progression of what you have now. I'm not so sure about them reversing. Keto Pilates chick says, I need to get off the processed food. I keep setting a sobriety date and failing each day. All right come on into my groups. I've got December groups and um, you will have every single day, 24 seven contact with, I think I have, the, I, I, I have all my group members all into one private WhatsApp chat and it's so supportive. And you could literally type in there and say, I'm white knuckling it in front of chocolate covered pretzels right now. What do you all do to, and there'll be five, eight different people coming at you with, support and replies. And it's just a really great way to feel like you're being held accountable. You can ask me questions at every meeting. I keep the group small enough. So really, and I'm, I'm being totally upfront, every single meeting, every person has an opportunity to talk, ask questions, bring up topics, and feel normal in this world of flying our freak flag as far as food. So all right, guys, thanks so much for joining. I um, I really appreciate you all. And like I said, um, this has become sort of a great um, family for me that I, like I said, wanted to, I, every year I sort of celebrate my birthday on a live, but I really feel like I'm, I want to try doing these more often um, if you all find them helpful. And um let me know in the comments and I'm going to post this up for, uh, as a video. So if you feel like you found it helpful and you know, somebody who might also, um, get benefit from the information, go ahead and forward it to them. Thanks so much. And I'll see you guys all soon.